Let's start with our focus on Newspoint at this hour. The West Asia region has witnessed unprecedented intensification of India-US engagement amid China's debt trap diplomacy and territorial ambitions. Is there a second West Asia Quad in the making? Here's a look at the recent developments and the rapidly evolving global security dynamics. The national security advisors of India, Saudi Arabia and the UAE and also the United States met recently. This is potentially a second quad in the making involving the West Asian states, the other being Israel, United States, UAE and India or the I2U2. Both New Delhi and Washington have been intensifying their diplomatic outreach to West Asia in recent years. Abraham Accords, signed in 2020, catalyzed wider change in the region. Abraham Accords helped develop normalcy in ties among nations including Israel, UAE and also Bahrain. While the relationship is expanding, Saudi Arabia is still not ready to normalize relations with Israel. However, there are intense back-channel engagements between Israel and Saudi Arabia, which experts say have been an open secret for years. India has old links with West Asia and is upping the ante and its diplomatic game in this region. The relationship has seen added momentum in recent years with reciprocal uh, high-level visits. What we also know at this hour, while both India and United States have had a long-term presence in West Asia, what is possibly driving the fresh momentum is the increasing role played by China in this region. Beijing recently broke at peace between regional arch rivals Saudi Arabia and Iran. West Asia is also an important component of China's Belt and Road Initiative. Chinese state-owned companies are building rail lines, roads, ports and power projects across the region with an eye on China's creeping presence in West Asia and elsewhere, United States and India are exploring additional combinations of partnerships. Well, our correspondent spoke to United Arab Emirates United Nations envoy. Take a look. Thank you so much. Thank you, Madam Ambassador. My name is Susan Tehrani from We Are News India. Uh, recently, the National Security Advisors of India, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, and the United States met in Saudi Arabia, and there is a lot of talk that perhaps a second quad is in the making in the Middle East. Of course, you are part of the I2U2. Uh, I was wondering if you could comment on that. There is a lot of excitement regarding that uh, in our region. There are a number of mini laterals, if you like, that are emerging in our part of the world. And, uh, and that has been described in uh, numerous ways, but essentially countries that have uh, really shared in interests, strong ties like India, like the UAE, like others, coming together uh, to try and address some of these core issues in a way that is flexible and agile, I think is a really good buttress to the multilateral system. It, it is about regional solutions to regional problems, but it's also about the positive agenda that we hope to see come uh, when countries uh, with the capabilities that these countries that you've mentioned have combine their efforts to try and essentially do good in the region. So that, you know, that meeting is a discussion about everything from cooperation in the space of renewable energy and green energy, technology, um, how to uh, generate more jobs for uh, an increasingly youth uh, pro profiled uh, uh, domestic market in the region and they're all going to be looking for jobs and looking for work and looking for an activated economy and it's looking for ways to bring down borders and barriers to economy trade uh, and people to people flow. So I would say uh, I don't have something tangible to give you right now about what these conversations are around. Um, but they are about the space of innovative uh, uh, technology, innovative approaches to regional challenges, uh, and finding, finding common ground, finding ways to move forward. Uh, so thank you for, for noticing that. I do think these are exciting partnerships, and I think they are partnerships that will generate a lot of interest in, in our populations. Well, Ambassador Navdeep Singh Suri is a former Indian ambassador to UAE. He's also a former High Commissioner of India to Australia and a distinguished fellow at the ORF. He's joining us from New Delhi to talk more about this. Ambassador, thank you very much for joining us on We On Wild is One News Point. Pleasure. 
Ambassador, we are talking about the West Asia Quad being in the offing. What do you think are the factors responsible for the new grouping and what is the significance of a West Asia Quad, both for Saudi Arabia and India? Well, I think, first of all, let's not get ahead of uh, ourselves in terms of nomenclatures, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I use the term West Asia Quad when the I2U2 happened, and then, of course, the uh, U.S. Uh, uh, President uh, Biden uh, gave the name I2U2 for India, Israel, UAE, and U.S. I think what you're seeing is uh, really the rise of these uh, uh, minilaterals that bring together like-minded countries for a set of shared objectives. Uh, this is different from traditional diplomatic frameworks where you had uh, treaties and agreements uh, uh, set in stone, uh, making commitments to each other that had to be carried out, uh, say, in NATO or other uh, uh, forums. Here, you agree on a bunch of things. In this case, in I2U2, for example, we know it's a private sector-driven in, uh, initiative where government is a supporter and facilitator, and its predominant emphasis is on the economy. Right. The meeting of the four NSAs that took place in uh, Riyadh uh, where obviously you had Saudi Arabia, but not Israel, because Saudi Arabia and Israel do not have diplomatic relations um, at this point of time, mm -hmm. um, had a bunch of things on, on the menu. And I thought one of the most interesting things that they uh, uh, put out in the press release uh, after the meeting was to explore connectivity between India uh, and uh, West Asia using existing and new links. And this could be really fascinating if it comes about. I mean, just imagine that a, a container ship leaving from Mumbai uh, on the west coast of India, sailing to Jabal Ali in uh, Dubai, um, stuff being put on a rail um, from Jabal Ali through Saudi Arabia, through Jordan, through Israel to Haifa, uh, and then on a ship across to Europe you create a nice little alternative uh, to the Suez Canal. Yeah, and, and that would be a great a route significance. That is, and that would be a great significance. It has a strategic, yeah, it has a strategic value because we saw what happened when you had a ship uh, uh, blocking the Suez Canal for several days uh, a couple of years back. And, you know, international commerce was almost coming to a halt. Mm. So I think, I think there are benefits in looking at alternate approaches of connectivity, which will benefit all sides. And I think that was one of the key takeaways from the meeting of the uh, four NSAs in Riyadh. Ambassador, let's talk more about that I2U2 uh, forum. What do you think are the advantages of Lukwest policy for India and the Indo-Pacific region, and now countries like Saudi Arabia? Well, you know, I think, I think India's foreign policy over the last few years has been pretty nimble in seizing opportunities uh, that have come uh, its way. Uh, the Abraham Accords, which were signed in August 2020, um, uh, normalizing diplomatic relations between Israel and UAE and Bahrain, uh, created an entirely new um, uh, opportunity for India. And we were quick when the offer came to us uh, to join I2U2. And look, the proof is in the pudding. The first two projects that are being taken up by ITU2, uh, one is a food security project with India as a, 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 an agriculturally rich country uh, uh, where UAE has promised to put in $2 billion of investment uh, to create a food corridor that takes uh, certain Indian uh, agricultural products into UAE. Right. Now, if this model works, this could be potentially extended to other Gulf countries, including Saudi Arabia, because all of those countries, uh, you know, with their desert terrain, uh, are going to be food deficit. Uh, and, and so food security is a major issue for them. Uh, a lot of work is being done on this food corridor that is being set up under the I2U2 framework. There's a second project that is being taken up uh, in, in the state of Gujarat in India. Uh, which is a clean energy uh, project, a very interesting hybrid energy project, which takes in solar and renewable and state-of-the-art battery technologies uh, to create, uh, hopefully, a very interesting new prototype. So you can see how India is benefiting in real and tangible ways uh, through its partnership in these initiatives. 
Well, there's a lot to talk about uh, when it concerns uh, this West Asia Quad and also the I2U2. But uh, we are out of time, Ambassador. Thank you very much for giving us time and talking to We On Wild is One today. Pleasure. We On is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.